Welcome back to the CLT Life radio show with Jimmy G and Walls. I'm Jimmy. I'm Walls. This is Walls over here. We're laughing at ourselves. We're recording this on Zoom as well, and we got this fishbowl uh, camera, so you got to be like right in the middle or you end up being a little blurry on the outside. So, well, today is uh, today's show is Aaron, Friday, October 7th. <laughs> Friday, I had to do a little math right there. And um, so, yeah, we'll be talking about Carolina Panthers, uh, what's going on, the dysfunction within the Carolina Panthers that we're seeing on the football field right now. Um, Charlotte Hornets kicked off their preseason and uh, we'll talk a little bit business, too. We're yeah. both we're both businessmen, entrepreneurs and something like that, something like that. <laughs> doing doing different things. Uh, radio hosts, right. <laughs> musician, artist, Man. realtor. Um, uh, fashion mogul wannabe. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about Kanye Grapponi. Kanye Grapponi, yeah. So we're gonna talk about all that stuff and um and more. So thanks for tuning in. I think we got a fun show for you today. Sure. It sounds good to me. All right. I want to hear it. All right. We'll be right back on the other side of the break. <laughs> all right, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. It's Jimmy G here with the CLT Life Radio Show. Uh, with my man Walls right here, so let's let's get right into it. Let's talk uh, a little bit. Car- little Carolina Panthers football. Right. Um, we uh, we had we just came off the game against the Arizona Cardinals this past week. Took the lead into the into the half, and then ended up imploding imploding in the second half. So, well, uh, what were some of your biggest takeaways from that game? Uh, the offense struggles to score points. They really do. They can't. I, they can't get in the end zone. They don't know where it's at they need a map gps something to find an end zone because they're never close <laughs> yeah we got in well they got in at the end of the game but yeah. uh they got in frankie louvu scored right he had a, a pick six which was I, I saw they were saying that was the first pick six and something like 96 right. games for the panthers which is the longest streak in the nfl yeah, we, we've got all these crazy streaks that are terrible that are bad streaks bad yeah streaks. Streaks, you yeah, like streaks you don't want to have streaks you don't want to have um and of course, in the NFL, everything starts with the quarterback, um, and we're just not getting great quarterback production from Baker Mayfield. And he, you know, he'll make some decent throws along the way, but then you just see him missing guys uh, consistently. Yeah, he had some bad misses. He some missed. Uh, misses. He missed DJ Moore on that one. Uh, is an interception where yeah. he's wide open. He threw it behind them. Behind them. Uh, I missed uh, he's more high on another, you know, sort of out route where he's wide open. Mm-hmm. And so he's just, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. And then he gets a lot of balls batted down. And so. Which they said that was, I guess that's nothing new. Apparently that was something that he dealt with in, uh, in Cleveland as well. But right. I never really, I guess I wasn't watching the Browns every, every game. I always felt like, I always felt like he was a playmaker. So I, I expected more out of out of Baker Mayfield when we signed him. He was actually the guy that I was hoping that the Panthers would end up signing. And yeah, it's not going the way that we thought it would. Or that I thought it would. Yeah, because I didn't necessarily want them to sign him. Who, who did you want him to go after? I, well or did you? I I no, I wanted him to, you know, not ship Cam Newton off the first time, then not ship Teddy Bridgewater off after that. I thought they could have won games with Teddy Bridgewater, but this, you know, at this point, is Bridgewater still playing? He's in Miami. He's the back. He might be playing now. For oh, two of them. being out, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, at this point, or over the in, in the off season, you know, I was fine. I didn't. I, I'm not in love with Sam Darnold, but after you've messed up the position so much, I was fine with just doing what you could do with Darnold you know, in, in his second year in the offense and just sort of seeing how it went. Maybe Jimmy Garoppolo, if he was available, I think he's better than Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're both game manager types. But, yeah, I, I don't know. when The history is that we've just messed get, up the position so much that mm-hmm. at this point it's kind of like you have to start over. I was going to say, it's almost like you got to be get bad to get good and – I don't know if the the process is right. the same in football as it is in some other sports. Yeah, like the Houston Astros were awful. They mm-hmm. sucked for years and years, and now they're 
the best team probably in the AL and they've won a few World Series. Uh-huh. You got, you know, famously the 76ers who right. haven't won a championship, but they were god awful as well and ended up, you know, turning into right. a good team. The Hornets got really, really bad. We won seven, seven games or nine games that oh, that yeah. strike short the season. season. Ticket holder that year. <laughs> um, <laughs> unfortunately, we didn't like get over money. Yeah, we didn't get over the hump, but uh, it's like well, Kimba at least made it exciting, right? He came into his own, and you know, I I wouldn't say they put pieces around him, but because we kept missing on guys there as well, yeah. I but yeah. back to the back to the quarterback point though. Right. Remember the last time we had quarterback play that was I think this bad because this is even worse than uh, what we had with I feel like with Kyle Allen and um and uh, Tyler what was his name. Taylor Heineke. Tyler Heineke, yeah, yeah, Heineke. For sure. Like, this has got to be worse. Than, this goes back to, like, the Jimmy Clausen days. It feels worse. Yeah. And definitely. you remember at what happened after Clausen's one year? What? We got Cam Newton got the next Cam. year. Oh. So, I mean, I saw somebody in a, in a thread uh, that I was reading this morning on The Athletic, and one of the comments was, uh, C.J. Stroud's about to be our next quarterback. So, <laughs> whether it's C.J. Stroud from Ohio State right. or, um, you know, got the quarterback Bryce from Young. Bryce Young from Alabama. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we could be looking to draft a quarterback. Whoever the next, uh, whoever the next coach is going to be. Well, our record's going to suck, so we'll be in position if we can. <laughs> if we can not mess that part of, if we can just go ahead and be bad, then let's just go ahead and be bad. Because are you going to keep watching if they're bad? We're not good. Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we got to watch a little bit to to know what's to going talk on. To about talk it. about yeah. it. But. Well, you know, no, and in fairness to the defense, they came out like gangbusters. And you know, Lou made a great individual play, but the but the unit was doing well. Mm-hmm. Brian Burns was in the back. He was a beast. Yeah, he was making plays. Derek Brown, bad ball. He's really improved. Yeah. Derek Brown. We I talked about him a couple of weeks ago, saying that you know that might have been a mistake picking him so high. Right. And still, maybe if you could have gotten a quarterback, maybe you want a quarterback in that slot. But I don't remember. Was that the year with Mac Jones and and Justin Herbert and those guys? I think Herbert went. Number five, and I think we were picking like seven. So Mac Jones was just Jones went a little bit later, but Mac Jones was just two years ago with uh, when we got J.C. Horn. Okay, uh, okay, that was that draft. Um, I don't remember the quarterback from Browns draft. I don't remember what year it was, but point being, he you know he's trying to round in the shape. Um, I think he's a good player and a good guy, which you always want as well. Um, yeah, the defense is good enough to win some games. The offense is holding the whole team back. And, you know, I don't know what we can do. Maybe a quarterback switch. Sam Donald's going to get in at some point probably, but he'll make his mistakes and we'll just sort of trudge through a difficult year, I'm sure. Tepper's saying he's going to be patient with the rule. Well, this is his fourth year now. This is his fourth year. He a got seven a seven-year plan. Seven year plan but I mean, that I mean, you know, you're talking about a decade of yeah. bad football. If you and who wants that? I feel yeah. like, um, like, is this what it feels like to be a, uh, a Detroit Lions fan or a New York Jets fan? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. We're those guys now. We've had because they're playing okay football these days. Those yeah, teams. I mean, we've had so we've had, um, and the Lions are playing great on offense right now. But we've had. Years we've had the Panthers have had some very successful years and some very good teams, mm-hmm. but since 1995, so this is the 28th year, 27, 28 season, mm-hmm. they've still never had back to back winning seasons. That's crazy. in the history of the franchise, almost 30 years, they've never had back to back. Radios would be like, what is what's that going on? <laughs> we got a little, little light outage there for a second, but yeah, but yeah the NFL. Um, 27 the Panthers have never had back-to-back winning seasons. So even through the Cam Newton, yeah. Thomas Davis, Luke Keekley years. And they were the first team to win the division back to back, right? But I think they won it three years in a row, but they won it that one year where it was set that they had losing record. Oh, Seven yeah. nine and oh, one wow. that year. Remember? Jeez. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, we were talking about Derek Brown. The pick right before uh Derek Brown was Justin Herbert. Right. So before him, we got Joe Burrow was the number one pick. Yeah. Chase Young. Yeah. Jeff Okuda uh, for Detroit. No I idea how he's doing. I don't think fans love him in no. Detroit. Yeah. Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle for the New York Giants. He might be doing solid. Tua went fifth. Justin Herbert went sixth. And that's who I was really hoping was going to fall to us. And then he didn't. So 
we ended up going with, with uh, Derek Brown. I'm trying to see if there's any other quarterbacks who were taken in that in that first round that yeah. year. Some good players. Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, you know, receivers. Oh, wow, yes, the great receivers. Yeah. I mean, Justin Jefferson's putting up numbers like uh, – Maybe the best receiver in the league. Yeah, he's putting up numbers like Randy Moss used to put up. You know, uh, Jordan Love. Yeah. Uh, who's still sitting on the bench for uh, for Green Bay? Right. You know, will he ever play? Is it going to be a Jimmy Garoppolo situation right. where he gets traded away because Tom Brady never retired? Might be the same situation. Well, and when he's playing, when he played, he you know he looks okay, but he he doesn't look like an earth shattering talent. You know, you never know, uh, right? But yeah, so all the best quarterbacks went before we picked in 2020, and so what can you do about that? You know. But ultimately, I think sticking with Cam or at least sticking with Bridgewater when you had the chance and then evaluating the quarterbacks in these past two drafts or so and saying, you know, we like one of these guys, provide some stability to the position for one and then the organization. Um and so, and we haven't had that, and it just trickles down to, to the whole team because everybody can feel the uncertainty, and everybody knows when one position or player or position group or whatever is holding or one side of the ball yeah. is, is, is holding the team back. Everybody knows it, and that it's the offense and the frustration builds mm -hmm. amongst the players, and so you know. It, I don't know if he's lost the locker room yet, Matt Rule, but, you know, it can't feel good. Yeah. So, well, the, we got the Panthers. They're struggling right now. Struggling. Uh, Charlotte FC soccer team is actually, you know, they're playing pretty good. They had a 4-0 win this, this past weekend. And then we um, got the Hornets basketball season about to start. Oh, yeah, they just started preseason. Just started preseason, yeah. yeah. So I think they got blown out by the Boston Celtics. So. In their first game, yeah. Yeah, it's um, preseason though. It's preseason, and you don't put too much stock in the preseason. But after losing Miles Bridges with the domestic violence situation he has going on, um, and not really making too many moves in the in the off season, I think they were waiting to see. Were they just waiting to see what was going to happen? They were, or? and they and they sort of gave away a draft pick, traded away a draft pick. Ostensibly, I, it, from what I understand, is because. They wanted to have more money to give the bridges. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the, you know, that happened, the draft happened before his domestic violence. Um, that was uh, a bad, the, bad time. The alleged <laughs> domestic violence. Yeah, right, yeah. It, 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 yeah, it was a terrible time. It was the worst possible time in, for the team. And so, anyway. And especially an up-and-coming team. And, yeah. and he's a bona fide number two. Behind, you know, if Lamelo is your all-star, then Miles Bridges is like a borderline all-star. Yeah, he's he scoring – 2022 20, a game i think last year and yeah. um highlight real highlight real yeah all the time like those two ends of the court yep and good it, teammate good good player it seemed like it, it, yeah it, everything i don't know you know it we don't know where it went wrong but it went horribly wrong and so uh again you got a team that's just sort of in limbo trying to find some sort of direction you draft mark Williams, he's tall. I don't, you know, you've got two other centers on the roster. He's not starting. Plumlee mm -hmm. and Nick Richards probably are both going to play before him. So, you know, what did you really do there? Yeah, I mean, they drafted him to be a, a rim protector, but we really don't have a history of of rookies doing a whole lot with the Hornets. Yeah. Besides, besides Lamelo. Yeah. So and, Lamelo obviously did. He was rookie of the year. Well, we've always had coaches traditional coaches who didn't want to play the rookies, didn't right? really want to play rookies and then the other thing is we've always had teams that could maybe compete for the seventh or eighth seed and now with the play in you know the ninth or tenth seed and so you don't you we've never been just just tanking on a season mm -hmm. from the beginning of the season um kimba gave us a chance for a while and so but, you know, is Hayward, Gordon Hayward, what's his status? Yeah, Hayward had a, a, a knee contusion, I think, okay. yesterday. So he didn't play against the Celtics. And so, yeah, you know, you have Hayward healthy and Kelly Oubre, LaMelo, of course, P.J. Washington, Terry, Terry. Rozier. Mm -hmm. There's some good players. They can score. They can score. I don't know that they can defend. That's what we got Mark Williams for. I, 
Well, and Steve Clifford's a defensive-minded coach. And very defensive. And he said recently, I was listening to, to an interview on FNZ, and he was mm-hmm. saying that this was the most talented offensive team that he had ever coached. Yeah, and, and I think they're going to play James Booknight some more. Um, he was our first round draft pick a few years ago. I think the intention, they said that he was the first, the sixth man in yesterday's preseason game. So he's the first substitute off the bench. And, you, you know, that's what we've, we've always needed help on the wings, um, shooting guard, and we drafted him. So we might as well see what he can do. Mm-hmm. I don't think he had a great game yesterday, but. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at, looking at stats now, it looks like we got blown out in the second quarter. It was a mm-hmm. five point game, first quarter blown out in the second quarter. Outscore by so outscore by seventeen in the second, eight in the third, and eleven in the fourth quarter. And I don't know if they played starters the whole game or yeah, the preseason I, game. They said the plan was to play guys around 20, 25 minutes game. You know, so um, but I heard Jalen Brown had a really good game for the Celtics. He looked strong early on. I did see a little bit um, of the early action, mm-hmm. and he looked. Um, yeah, Jalen Brown looked really strong yesterday. And he is, you know, he's an all-star, all yeah, I mean, NBA caliber player. You know, he's basically the second best player on the team that could win a championship that almost won a championship. Yeah, him and Tatum um, between those two guys. Very formidable. So, it, it, I, I'm not basing anything off this game other than we're a really young team. We lost a really good player. Gordon Haywood was injured for the latter part of the season. So, yeah, you know, we're also with the new coach. Right. Know, let Borrego go. So, again, we're searching for an identity. And I thought the, I thought Borrego was a good coach. I mean, I, I, too. I don't know what was going on in the locker room or, or you know, he wasn't – I mean, it didn't necessarily get him playing defense the way right. maybe they needed to. So, maybe they needed a change. But I feel like if they hadn't gotten blown out in back-to-back playing games that Borrego might still be here. Yeah, I don't know. I think philosophical is something philosophical. Maybe with the playing the young guys, or there, there had to be something because Book Knight didn't play uh, much in the second half. Now he got in trouble. He had some issues. I think they butted heads, and that might have been part of it. It's just he butted head, butted heads with some of the younger players in a way that wasn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. But. I thought he was a good coach, and, you know, especially when Kimber was here, he got the best out of those guys um, with, with some rosters that weren't crazy talented. Mm-hmm. And he got great production and effort. And so, yeah, you know, we'll miss him. I like Steve Clifford, too. It's just all the setbacks for both franchises, the Panthers and the Hornets, they, they seem to add up. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, and – it takes away from the excitement sometimes of being a fan. Right. Because um, well, we're, in a, we're in a major city. We're in a place that people are moving to every single day. Right. Uh, and I've been here for 15, 16 years and have watched the city grow and, uh, you know, culture and, and restaurants and food. Right. And, and, you know, we become a big city and yeah. we got an NFL team, NBA team. We got triple A baseball. baseball. That's, um, you know, the, they have the best attendance year after year, probably the best minor league. Well, maybe not the Savannah Bananas. If yeah, you hear about them, but, but as far as just like a, a pure baseball and the Checkers won experience, yeah, Checkers won they a few won, years ago. They want to call the cup, I believe, a few years ago. So like it, and and North Carolina is a sports state. You yeah, we've got rich sports history, especially collegiately. Mm-hmm. You know, Tobacco Road and so forth. So, you know, it's here, but we. We haven't had the management and coaching and sort of – we haven't won. We haven't been winners, so we're still waiting to be winners. That's what we need. And you can talk about stats um, as all you want and and philosophies, and but it comes down to the fact that winners win. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we had one season in 2015 with Cam where we felt like winners, and it was a tremendous energy – I remember going to the pre Super Bowl parade. Yeah, I mean the Premier energy Bearden. was the energy was crazy. I remember going to the Super Bowl send off mm-hmm. um, over at what was then Unknown Brewery over off Main Street around that way. Mm-hmm. And I was at the television station, and so we were covering it, and the energy was tremendous. Yep. you know, for in the entire city and in the region, and it just sort of we were on national TV a lot, you know, and it was fun, and players were getting a lot of press, and we had. 
We that was the year we played Dallas in the Thanksgiving game, and yeah. we had the the all blue uniforms. Yeah, yeah. the the the, uh, the color, the yeah, color rush, the, the color rush uniforms. Yeah. yeah, and it was just there were just so many highlights from the season. The dabbing, you know, yeah. the, the whole team dabbing and after celebrating in the end zone, and it was just a lot of fun. And we haven't had that a lot before. Maybe the the Super Bowl run. Um, with the loam and those guys, yeah, and Stephen Davis and all those guys, but we haven't had it, you know, Steve Smith, yeah, um, we hadn't had it much before and we hadn't had it since at all. And so, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is because we need Steve room. Smith in that locker room, yeah, we need, you know, <laughs> we need that. Well, and, and at this point, we sort of made our bed, right? Uh, so, you just kind of maybe you just have to lie. It. So, rules, um, his first draft was all defense it was the first time yeah. somebody had ever picked all defensive players mm -hmm. and we did not pick a single offensive player and i think our we have a, a defense that can win championships maybe i mean we have a we have a playoff caliber playoff and possibly caliber. Yeah. possibly a championship caliber with the right offense right um defense we have a really strong defense i think but when you're on the field that much, I mean, you're gonna get worn. You're gonna get worn down, and it happened. It happened last year too. Yeah, and I think Chen got hurt yesterday. Yeah, Jeremy Chen got hurt really, yeah, got hurt hurt really early on. Came back, so he didn't. Yeah, it it, it was uh, you know, tough game to watch as a fan, just because you kept expecting the offense to make a few plays, put a string of plays together, and maybe punch it in the end zone, especially when the defense gives you a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, it's just really disappointing as a fan. When, when you don't have anything to cheer for from your offense at all. It's tough. I agree. All right. Well, we, we spent about 20 minutes uh, talking about depressing sports. <laughs> right. <That's>, uh, <laughs> I wish we had better. Yeah, let's lift the mood a little bit. Talk about. Yeah. So uh, we're talking a little bit off air just about, uh, you know, some of the, the challenges and um, obstacles, but also the th things that you have to overcome or you deal with when, when operating a small business, when – when uh, anytime you're pursuing something new. So like for us, you know, this, this radio show is something new that we're learning right. every single day. Yeah. And, and hopefully um, everybody, whoever's listening out there is enjoying, you know, what we have to talk about. Um, you know, I've been in real estate for the past, this is my 10th year now. So I just uh, celebrated my ninth uh, anniversary being in real estate about a month ago. So coming up on a decade and it's taken a little while, but I've, yeah, I, I feel like I, when you started. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like I figured some things out there, but now with this and then um, trying to get this gear and apparel thing right going, you've got your music um, yeah, that yeah. you've been doing. That yeah. you're you know ama you're an amazing artist, Thanks. Um, very talented. So yeah, definitely check out Walls, which we figured out on Spotify. If you type in Walls W A L S Hip Hop right um, yeah. on Spotify. It comes up and mm -hmm. and, and all your and tracks specific songs. So it has mm -hmm. the other thing. If you, you type in Walls. And then a specific song like, like anywhere, anywhere uh, all I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got one selfish is a track people like tonight. So walls and one of those specific songs, and it'll you know it'll bring me up. I just, yeah, and that just feeds into the conversation. There are so many uh, aspects of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and there's so many hats that you have to wear, and and so many. Um, platforms that you have to be proficient with you know technically now in this technological age to sort of keep up with uh especially the younger generation right who, <laughs> who, who have been raised with this technology right like it's second nature to them so a two-year-old knows how, how to turn the tv on and, yeah, and get it to for sure disney channel like, for what? sure <laughs> right you know and they can and they can use iPads and yeah. tablets and phones and so forth. So, but you know, to to be able to manage a business, you have to be really organized because there's just so much information that you have to consume mm -hmm. to make everything work together. It's hard to do it on your own, all on yourself. It is. On your own. And I think that's a that's what people probably need the most help with. Is knowing what to let go of. What to let go of and who to bring on to help. Right. And, and in a cost effective way, um, and because there are ways to, to find people. And, and, you know, now after COVID and sort of like this sort of recession and or, or the um, what do they call it? Everybody left their jobs. 
Oh, the great, uh, um, the great uh, resignation. Yeah, the great resignation. Right. Which they say a lot of people are now regretting. Yeah. Having I'm left sure. those jobs. I'm sure, and and so right, but we're. My point was that we're sort of moving toward a gig economy. Right. For for a lot of stuff, and so you can find people who will do gigs for you. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily always say inexpensively, mm -hmm. but but when they're doing gigs, you can sort of consume what you need at your own rate. And so you can pay for what you need and you don't have to get in the big long contract. Like have you used Fiverr or any of yeah, those? Fiverr, Fiverr is a, a, a great tool and resource for finding uh, gig help and people who are really professional. And the good thing about Fiverr, out there. a lot of editors, uh, people will help you with content, design, logos. The good thing about Fiverr is, is there's some sort of oversight by Fiverr themselves, right? They hold the sellers accountable and the buyers. Mm -hmm. They hold the sellers specifically accountable, though. So you know that you know if something's not right, you sort of you have a resource to try to make it right, and and it's not like Craigslist or something, mm -hmm. you know, where you just you you work with somebody on Craigslist for say, and, and it doesn't go right. Then what can you do? You just right. sort of stuck. You lost money. But um, Craigslist is the online yellow pages, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. It's just like look up and you're at your, you know, to, at your own risk. Um, but yeah, it, as a small business owner or entrepreneur, um, you know, all the hats that you have to wear, the organization is really important to being successful. And, and that's with anything. But but especially when you're trying to be an entrepreneur and do entrepreneur and do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty well said. <laughs> well, and then with the um, with the gear and apparel, CLT Life gear and apparel, uh, which you can go on the cltlife.com and and link to that. And Walls, we'll have your music on that page yeah, as well. Sure. Yeah, we'll get it up. So, but yeah, figuring out. So I'm I'm doing. I got a couple shows coming up. Uh -huh. uh, Sunny Day Market, right? Which is uh, they do pop up shops. Uh -huh. Just found out about them uh, recently. They're in the Charlotte area, and they do a lot of pop up shops with um they'll go to like local breweries or small downtown areas they do them in concord they do them in belmont they do them in monroe waxhaw pineville with middle james brewery mm -hmm. and it's a great opportunity for small businesses to get out there yeah. and and show off their stuff so i'm learning right now i'm learning the whole process of um making shirts do i do i make my own yeah, shirts so like you know Printing. Printing, yeah. Do I print them myself? Do I outsource? Uh -huh. You know, what products to bring? Because uh, it's, it's a big investment to yeah. have stuff out there. Right. And don't, you don't want to spend a thousand dollars on product that, that nobody, nobody buys, wants, right? right? Nobody wants. So so that's a that's a learning curve. But it's it's fun though. I yeah. enjoy it. It's it, that's sort of like a I guess like a passion project. Passion project. Um, right. so it's it's fun. Um so yeah, I'll be on October 22nd in Wax downtown Waxhaw from uh -huh. 10 to 4. October 29th, Middle James Brewery from three to eight, where they're going to have these pop-ups. So y'all definitely uh, mark your calendar if you're looking for something to do, get some early Christmas gifts, Christmas get gifts, some shopping yeah. done early on. I mean, you got good design. So, you know, and that that's another part of it, having having a good product. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it'll sell itself. You know, now, obviously marketing is important, but if you have a good product, people will find their way to it. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to put together a live show um, for an album release party for my upcoming album, These Are the Good Days. And so, you know, I'm going through the process of having some special guests, finding my venue, um, working with a band, Encore, a uh, local band here in Charlotte. So, yeah, trying to bring together all of the uh, elements to, to, you know, provide a, a nice evening of, of live music. Mm -hmm. And and it's a task too, but it's also a labor of love and, it, and it's what I enjoy doing. So I'm really looking forward to putting this live show together. I'll have more details as I get it, um, as I get all the details worked out. Right now we're aiming for December, okay. early December, December 7th, I believe. Um, and, you know, and I'll start letting people, letting people know the venue pretty soon, but yeah, um, you know, it's fun and it's rewarding sort of to be an entrepreneur, be your own boss, but it takes uh, organization and consistency uh, in spades. So that's what we're all working towards you know, right now. 
Exactly. Every single day. Well, thanks everybody for listening. I think that's our time for today. Well, as always, yeah, man. Enjoyed it. we enjoy doing this all the time. So thanks for listening. Uh, tell your friends, tell everybody else about it. Uh, 7.30 a.m. on WDRB. Go on iHeartRadio. I like to, to tell Alexa or Echo, whatever you call her at home, just to, to play. I, I'm laying there in the bed sometimes getting up, and I'll say, <laughs> Alexa, play WDRB on iHeartRadio. And if you do that at 7.30 a.m. on Fridays, you get to hear us. You get to hear us, exactly. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, please spread the word. Let people know that we're on here talking about uh, – Really everything Charlotte. So we, we obviously talk a lot of a lot of Charlotte sports, but we're we consider ourselves more of a lifestyle uh-huh. uh, channel. So sports, small businesses. Um, if you're a small business owner, or entrepreneur, you know we'd love to have you on the show and 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 have a conversation about your experience as well. So yeah, all about community. Exactly. Check us out. Well, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. You've been listening to the CLT Life with Jimmy G and Walls on WDRB Radio. The voice of the community. community. Yes, sir. All right.